Hi, Kath. Hi, Brad. Well, we're back in mission control, ready for another mission. Here we are. It is quite cool in here. Can we turn the aircon down? We can do that. Let me get the button. Oh, wait. That sound wasn't the aircon. Mm. That was our mission possible alert. I wonder who God's top agent is going to be today. Well, there's one way to find out, and that's to play my favourite game that is a completely original idea that is not copied off anyone in particular. It's Guess Whom. I love Guess Whom. Let's play. Okay, here is your first clue. Which Bible character am I talking about? Okay, go. Clue one. He was a prophet. Uh, prophets that I know are uh, Isaiah, Ezekiel, uh, Haggai. Great guesses, all wrong. Oh, okay, okay, clue number two. Uh, he was fed by ravens. Raisins? No, ra ravens. Oh, good. I don't like raisins. They're gross. <laughs> no. Okay, no idea? No, he was okay. fed by ravens. Yes. Okay, clue number three. His story is told in the Book of Kings and the book, Books of Chronicles. Well, there's a few prophets in there too. Mm -hmm. I think I'm narrowing it down. Okay, all right. Uh, here's, here's the last clue. Okay. He was a pretty fiery dude. Oh, so if he had fire, there's mm -hmm. only one prophet I can think of. Mm -hmm. Kids, if you know it, shout it out with me. Are you ready? It was... Elijah! Elijah! All right, Kath, so tell me more a bit about this Elijah guy. Okay, Elijah. Elijah is a prophet, which means he delivers messages from God to the people of Israel. That's his job. He's a prophet. Weird fact about Elijah is that one time during a drought, God sent ravens to bring Elijah bread and meat while he stayed by a brook for water. Like, yeah, I know. That's, That's kind of like better than Uber Eats. I know, right? It's kind of like Old Testament-style Uber Eats. <laughs> Elijah prayed for rain after a long drought and God sent a heavy rainstorm ending the drought. Elijah's known for hearing this still, small voice from God. When he's feeling scared and alone, God speaks to him, not through this kind of powerful earthquake, but through a gentle whisper reminding Elijah of his presence. So he sounds like a kind of guy that's been really close to God. He's very close to God. Okay. And he's seen God do some pretty incredible things. And actually, we see Elijah reappear in the New Testament as well. Maybe you've heard this story in the Transfiguration. Just before Jesus is about to go to the cross, Elijah appears with Moses to Jesus. Um, so we see him come back in the New Testament as well. And that's well. on top of a mountain and Jesus is bright white. Exactly right. Yeah. That's the story. And Elijah's name means my God is Yahweh, which is actually Elijah's mission from God overall. We're going to talk about one of his specific missions today, but his overall mission was to turn people's hearts back to the one true God. And that was Yahweh. That's a name for God. So this is a guy who's a prophet, who knows God super well and is called on a mission. What was the mission we're going to look at today? Okay. So it happens on a big mountain called Mount Carmel. Ooh, a Carmel? No, close. Caramel. 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 Okay. Sometimes with people with an American accent say caramel. Caramel. So it's close, but it's just caramel. Okay, caramel. Caramel. Mount caramel. And Elijah is having a bit of a battle with the prophets of a false god, a different god named Baal. And so they decide to have a god off. A prophet showdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so Elijah is like, I'm going to show you that my God is real. And these prophets of Baal are like, well, we're going to show you that our prophet is real. And so they prepare a sacrifice and they don't light the fire themselves. So what's going to happen then? So their gods are going to bring the fire. Right. That's the idea. So who can actually bring something alight without any way that the you know the humans have prepared? So it. no lighters, no flint and coal, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. They just put the animal that they've sacrificed on some like logs that just don't have anything to light them. Well, oh, showdown time. So what it's happens? It's showdown time. So Baal's prophets go first. They call on their god from morning until noon, shouting, dancing, singing, doing everything they can to get this false god, this non-god, to show up. And guess what? Nothing happens. Exactly. <laughs> Nothing happens. Baal does not answer. Then it's Elijah's turn. Elijah. Come on, Elijah. And Elijah, he uh, he actually goes to the to the place where he's got the sacrifice and you know the logs that aren't on fire, etc. And he's like, "Do you know what? I am going to show you guys how good my God is." 
and he wets it. He gets like a whole lot of water and just pours it over. So he puts the difficulty level up to 110. He does. He like turns it up and he's like, I'm going to show you how great my God is. He can turn water on fire. You know, like it's pretty out there. And then Elijah does something that I want you to hear because this is really important. He prays. Elijah stands in front of all of these people, in front of all of these people that follow um, this false God, and he prays to God and asks God to show the people that he is the true God. And then God shows up and God answers Elijah's prayer by sending fire from heaven. And the fire burns up the sacrifice, the wood, the soil, even the water that like is that has been poured over the sacrifice. God lights it all up. And there's this incredible, majestic fire from ground to heaven in front of everybody. It's completely impossible. Like, couldn't have happened. It's not even like a little campfire. It's like this massive pillar of hurricane fire. It is. It's exactly right. Like, imagine a tornado that's on fire. Wow. Like, that's the kind of picture that we have. Um, and when the people saw this, the people that were following Baal, the false god, the people that are following Yahweh, our god, the true god, they fall on their faces and they cry out, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. It's like this majestic moment where our God shows up in a big, powerful way and says, yeah, there ain't no other gods. It's just me. That's amazing. Now, I've been camping with my mum and dad before, and I know if it's raining, wet logs don't burn. There's part of me that wants to go, this story can't be right. But if all the things we've seen Elijah do in the past, all those stories about being have the rain come down and being fed by ravens, this is just another story of how Elijah's faithfulness and praying to God makes God show up and do incredible things, impossible things. That's right. And like, let me just take you there for a minute, Brad, because I think we miss this a little bit sometimes when we read the story, particularly if we've heard it a number of times. But like, imagine you're there, like use your imagination and just be there for a minute and just imagine what we see, because this is not just a campfire, as you said. This is not just, you know, a click of the fingers and there's a small fire that you could toast a marshmallow on. Like this is a swirling, powerful, like stream of fire that shoots down from heaven. So you look up from where you're sitting and you can't see where this thing starts. It is that high and it comes down as like a big cylinder of power and it's shooting embers off and it's hot. People have to move away from it. Maybe your eyebrows got singed. Yeah, maybe your eyebrows get singed. Like this is a powerful move of God. And I think that that's what this story shows, that God is all powerful and that he listens to and answers the prayers of his faithful servants. That's one of the things I hear in this story is there's power in prayer. Yeah. Yeah, because and that's why I wanted to show you that part of the story, because Elijah doesn't just wait for God to show up. He asks God to show up. And guess what? God he answers shows prayers. Up. Yeah. yeah. And he doesn't just show up a little. He shows up a, a lot. lot. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great story. I love that story. Well, I reckon we can pray right now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's pray. God, we pray that we would continue to have trust in you and come to you with all the big, big and little prayers we have on our heart, knowing that you're a God who hears us and you keep showing up for us again and again and again. Amen. Amen. So I wonder if wherever you are, whoever you're with right now, whether you could answer this question for each other. Firstly, what has God done for you in the past? What prayers has God answered for you as you've lived your life? And secondly, as always, what does this story show us about God? What do we learn about God through the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel? This story reminds me again of Jesus' words in Luke 18, 27. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Elijah on Mount Carmel proves this. Absolutely. It's impossible. Absolutely. But God makes it possible. Well, that's just another example of an impossible mission that God makes mission possible. Again, this is Kath and Brad at Mission Control. Over Over and and out. out.